Hey everybody, before I start the normal review, many people asked me to do a unboxing of the Super Star Destroyer. So here we have the box, just came in today. Now for the size of this baby, I would say it's about 24 inches wide, 16 inches long, and about 5 inches high. So it's a very big box. So I got my razor here. So let's get this baby open and see what's inside. Now I've been waiting for the Super Star Destroyer for... Jesus, I think I pre-ordered it in October. And sorry I'm not opening it well. I'm sort of in a weird angle because this is my reviewing area. So forgive me. I know the rule. Never cut towards yourself, but what are you going to do? I'm on the clock here. <laughs> so let's open this guy up. Oh, Jesus. Cardboard out the kazoo. Wow, no peanuts or anything, it's just all ship. God, this thing looks beautiful. Okay, so let's get rid of this box, shall we? Now, out of the cardboard box, this baby is a beast. I mean, a massive ship, probably the biggest starship I have in my collection besides the Black Series TIE Fighter. This is amazing, I can't wait to get it out of the box. I don't even know what to say. Holy ship! Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Points of Articulation. My name's Dave and if you're new to the channel, welcome! Today I am very happy to finally review the Star Wars Armada Super Star Destroyer Expansion Pack released in 2019. The Super Star Destroyer made its first on-screen appearance in Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. And for those of you who have been watching my Armada videos, you'll know I'm a massive fan of this ship, and I pre-ordered it almost day one. This ship is amazing, beyond all my expectations, I love it to death. Now, I've been eagerly anticipating this vessel for almost a year now since I pre-ordered it, and I am pumped to finally have this beauty in hand. So we have a lot to cover, so I'm gonna cut the chatter and get right to the review. So for the size of this ship, she measures in at 24 and a half inches, which is mind boggling. So big, and we're gonna have tons of size comparisons later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. So everybody should know how my videos go by now. We're gonna take a look at the dials and tokens, the cards, put on the stand, check out that beautiful mold, the paint, compare it to some other pieces, and then we'll be done, so let's get moving. And now it's time for that dial token roll call. Four command dials, one speed dial, two huge ship tokens, which are double-sided, 11 defense tokens, five objective tokens, four command tokens, one pass token, and finally, three ship ID tokens. So that does it for all the dials and tokens, so now let's take a look at those cards. And now looking at the cards, we'll begin with the four ship cards, or as the rules call them, ship sheets, since it is a brand new configuration to the game of Armada. First up, we have the Star Dreadnought Command Prototype, 22 hull, 2 blue anti-squadron, 4 command, 5 squadron, 4 engineering. And look at the damage output on these arcs. Magnificent stuff. On the bottom, we have our upgrades. And then you can put this baby out for 220 points. Up next, we have the Star Dreadnought Assault Prototype. 22 hull, blue and red anti-squadron die, 4 command, 5 squadron, 4 engineering. A little stronger in the dice here for the firing arcs. Pretty cool. All the upgrades possible. And it costs 250 points. So we got 33 hull, 2 blue and 1 black anti-squadron die, 4 command, 6 squadron, 5 engineering. Almost maxed out on the dice for the firing arcs. Pretty neat. Maxed out for possible upgrades. And it costs 381 points. And finally, we have the Executor 2 Class Star Dreadnought. Beautiful artwork here. 33 hull, red, blue, and black anti squadron die, 4 command, 6 squadron, 5 engineering. Looks to be 10 attack and a forward arc. This is a strong ship. Upgrades are maxed out, and this baby could go out for 411 points. So that does it for the ship sheets, so now let's take a look at those upgrade cards. Alright, for the upgrades, like in all my other reviews, I will read the name of the card. If you would like to pause the video and read the stats and paragraph below, by all means, go right ahead and continue when you're done. First up, we have Admiral Piet, Emperor Palpatine, Emperor Palpatine, 
Darth Vader, Admiral Ozzel, Director Krennic, Lyra Wessex, Commander Garant, Flight Controllers, Veteran Gunners, Borden Engineers, Point Defense Reroute, Rapid Launch Bays, Heavy Ion Emplacements, Quad Turbo Laser Cannons, X-17 Turbo Lasers, Entrapment Formation, All Fighters Follow Me, Shields to Maximum, Intensify Firepower, Ship Title Executor, Eclipse, Annihilator, and finally the Ravager. So that's all 24 upgrade cards, now let's take a quick look at the rulebook before we look at that stand. The Super Star Destroyer also comes with a 6 page booklet, so let's go over that now. On page 1 we have our introduction at the top as well as a components list with everything that comes with this expansion. From the plastic bases, the ship, tokens, and also cards. Moving on to page 2, we begin our rules. We have how to use the ship, how it moves, and this continues on to page 3 and 4. But for the most part, this page is all about assembling the stand and getting the ship ready. As we move on to page 3, it discusses huge ship rules, firing arcs, and then nice diagrams. So great need to know information here. Moving on to page 4, this is more explanation of the rules. It has a nice paragraph about pass tokens, how to set up our huge ship, and then command dials, attack, ship movement, scoring, all the fun stuff. Moving on to page 5, we discuss how to maneuver our huge ship using a maneuver tool. So that's pretty good, you're going to need to know this stuff. And then down here we have multiple icon upgrade cards. And over here we have contain, which is a defensive token, so that's pretty neat. And then as always, the last page is the credits. All the awesome people that brought this ship to the game. And that basically does it for the rulebook you get with this expansion, so now let's assemble that stand. When it comes to the base section of the Super Star Destroyer, unlike other ships that only have one base, this one in fact has two large ship bases. We've seen these multiple times before, especially with the Imperial Star Destroyers, as well as six shield indicators, and I'll explain why in just a few moments. We also get two ship pylons to hold the ship up, We've seen these before as well, there's nothing new, just repurposed parts. And finally, if we recall back to the dial token roll call, we do get two of these massive ship tokens. Today for our demonstration, we're going to use the Executor 1 class Star Dreadnought. So to assemble our stand, we're going to take our token, place it on the base like so, grab one of our pylons, push it through the rectangle, and then you're going to lock it in place, and there you go, it ain't going nowhere now. Same thing for the other side, grab your base, put the token on top, grab your pylon, press it in like so, push it forward to lock it in place, and as you can see the ship base is very large, so you're not going to use these two other shield indicators. But we do have this cardboard bridge going across the center, so I don't know if humidity or water will get to that and it will warp over time, but pretty interesting. So now when placing the ship on a stand, this can be tricky because of the size at times, but once you get it, it's not too hard. Just press it on like so. Get the front right here. It goes on real easy. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, you're good to go. So let's start looking at the mold of the ship. Like in all my reviews, I will go over all the major sections of the vehicle, and then we'll get a nice close-up look to see all those fine details. First up, we have the command tower with the flector shield domes, which looks pretty good. Then we have the superstructure, or the city section as I like to call it, which looks great. Turning the ship over, we can see a massive landing bay. And finally, we have the humongous engine section. All in all, this ship is awesome! And I know I kind of breezed through it, but we have a lot to look at. And now for our close-up, I'll begin with the dorsal section and the superstructure, move on to the trenches, and then the ventral section underneath. So for the top, we have some nice deep-cut line work, ray sections, fantastic stuff. I love these patches, they're spread throughout the ship, and they look good. Tons of little ray sections as well, little rectangles and squares. Fantastic stuff. And I love this section right here next to the superstructure. Beautifully molded. And nothing on here is flat. 
As you can see, there's just tons of raised sections and whatnot. Just a beautiful job. And as cool as this is, wait until we get to this, or the engine section. Your minds are going to be blown. Regardless, more line work. And I love these sections here. Very nice, just stacked on each other. You can see they are raised up slightly. Pretty nice. Moving towards the aft of the vessel. You can see more line work. Just a fantastic job in my opinion. This ship is beautiful. I love the little rectangles cut in. Pretty cool. Let me turn the ship this way. Now this bad boy is really big. So I'm trying to get the best shots I can for all of you at home. But check out the sides here. Now I didn't cover the sides coming down because that's more of the trench. But look at all this. All these little modules coming down here, all recessed in. Fantastic stuff. Just beautiful. I think they did a great job on here. Especially in the aft section. Look at that. Fantastic stuff. Pretty cool. Turning it around. We'll look at this side. Beautiful stuff. I like the center right here. That's looking cool. And then we have this section there. Looks like little pipes, even though, geez, uh, scale wise, that's not even a pipe. That could be like a little train or something. Who knows? Pretty neat, though. Coming down, the detailing continues. Again, it's not the same as the other side. All these little panels and cuts are a little bit different. But very impressive. Loving this section here. It's really well done in my opinion. I think they did a decent job. And coming back to the front of the ship. Just a fantastic piece. Holy moly. Moving on to the superstructure of the Super Star Destroyer or the city section. This has to be one of my favorite parts of the ship. And just look at it. You could probably stare at this frame for a good 30 minutes. And just keep finding something new on it. We have raised sections, recesses, tons of modules and molding. And there is literally trenches and steps and ledges all in here. Like you can't imagine all the little nooks and crannies in here. And the black wash with the paint just goes right in there and brings us all to life. And you can see the tons of layers so I'm just going to, you know, cut the chatter and just show you guys all this. Like, look at this stuff. This is insane. Like, I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. I just never seen this amount of detail on something that, you know, a normal person could just buy. Usually a model like this is a little more expensive. Well, those have lights and stuff, but... This is insane. Like, I, I really don't know what to say. It's just beautiful. Like, look at this. It's all recessed in, and there's molding in there. We have tons of raised parts. Like, let me turn it this way. And you can see there's all towers there. There's our command tower with the shield generators. We'll have a close-up of that in a few. But, oh my god. I, I, I don't even know what to say. This is just awesome. Hands down, beautiful. So let me get a different angle for all of you at home. Uh, let's try the other side, because it is not the same at all. Just beautiful. Like, look at all the levels here. That is fantastic. Like, little tiny raised windows in there and stuff. Or underneath, right here, we can see all these little ray sections. Tons of little modules. Just fantastic stuff. I like this section right here. Oh, it's like a grate right there. It's pretty cool. And then coming up. There's our command tower. 
is an amazing job. Look at all that. I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just geeking out here. This is... This is unbelievable. Now, I did want to show off that in between the superstructure and the main body, we have this nice wall here, and that is also completely molded and detailed. Just amazing. I think uh, one of the coolest parts is right here in the corner. We can see not only modules, but tons of what looks to be steps, even though these are the size of houses and skyscrapers. Like, holy moly. Coming down to the rest of the ship. You can see, uh, just looks like crooked steps for the most part. But the more you get to the front, you can see the molding is just magnificent. All around this little wall section. Just beautifully done. Very cool. Nice. And it's like that for the other side as well. We can see going down there, it does have some minor detailing. Again, both sides are different, so you're going to have different details. But uh, see how the corner here looks a lot different. Some bigger molded pieces. Really interesting stuff. I like this section right here. I think that looks very cool. And then we have the back of the ship. Some beautiful mold in there. Awesome stuff. Now zoomed in, we can see the command tower. And there is some pieces here for the molding, which I think is a shame. But the bridge would be right here where my fingernail is. Then we have our shield generator spheres, or domes if you want to call them that. And it is nicely detailed. Then we have the aft section of the command tower, and we can see the shield domes again. And some nice detail in connecting it to the superstructure. And before we move on, I just wanted to get a nice aerial shot of the superstructure of the Super Star Destroyer and let you see down all those trenches, nooks and crannies. This is a magnificent ship. Just look at all that. There's a command tower. Just beautifully done. Nice. And before I cover the trenches of the Super Star Destroyer, I just wanted to have the front view so you could see that if you're interested. Pretty nice. We can see some beautiful detail in there. And now looking at the sides of the ship, or as I like to call them, the trenches, these things are filled with an abundance of details. From squares, rectangles, odd shapes, modules, pipes, and what could be considered windows or landing bays, everything's here. It's either recessed or raised up. One of my favorite parts on the sides of this ship is either the top or the main body, just before you enter the trench section or side, that little lip filled with little, little modules that look like World War II turrets, perhaps ion cannons or turbo lasers, and they really pop with the black wash. Everything shines with that paint job. Very cool stuff. But what really makes the sides of this ship special is the same thing that really makes this whole ship special. Nothing is copy and pasted. Nothing's symmetrical. Everything has its own designs and shines in its own way. And the fact that you could just stare at this model and always find something new makes it totally worth it, in my opinion. And now looking at the ventral part of the craft, we can see the edges are really brought to life by that black wash looking great. Then we have our lines looking good, raised sections, magnificent stuff. Very similar to the top. As we can see, some beautiful work here. And don't worry, we'll look at the hangar bay very soon. We have these little patches looking amazing. A little mark there. It's not a scratch. It just looks like black wash. Weird. And then coming down towards the engines. Just a fantastic job here. Beautiful stuff. And then coming up to the center of the craft. I love this piece here. Looking good. Lots of cool designs. Fantastic stuff. Peg port right there. The other peg port is down this way. Right here on top of the engines. Coming down. Just look at this. Amazing work on here. And I'm impressed just with these lines. Wait until we get to the engine section. It's like this stuff, but more. Very detailed stuff coming. But 
pretty nice. So now let's take a look at the hangar bay. Now looking at the main hangar bay, we could see an amazing amount of details, tons of little molded sections, modules, layers, recesses. Everything is here and it looks amazing. Just a fantastic job. Nothing is similar. Each side is unique as we can see. We have these little facilities going down, but on this side, they're not there. It's all different stuff. Beautiful. Now, in the front of the ship, there's not really anything right here on the lip. However, when we go back to the aft section of the hangar bay, look at all that detail. And let me turn it around real quick right here. And right here, there's actually a little antenna. Pretty cool. Look at all that stuff. Molded on the edges. Just an amazing job. Let me turn it this way for all of you. Look at that. Beautiful. And I love how on the lip, we do have nice molding. But the neat thing is, underneath that molding on the wall, there is detailing. As we can see coming right down here. Let me get a nice shot for all of you at home. Look at all this stuff. Beautifully done. Very cool. This is definitely a piece that will stand out in your collection or on the game table. Magnificent. Again, let's get the other side real quick. Look at all that stuff. Beautiful. And in my opinion, this isn't even the most detailed part. And before we move on to the aft engine section, here is a shot of the hangar section from a distance. And as you can see, it is very detailed, very cool. And now looking at the aft of the vessel where the engines are located. Before I get started, I just want to say what we're about to see is probably the most detailed item I own at all. And I've been going over different ships from Fantasy Flight Games, Hot Wheels, Hasbro. Nothing comes close to this, not even Eagle Moss, what we're about to see. This is some grade A stuff going on here. So, starting off, we have our engines, nicely done, some paneling, molding, line work, everything's there that should be. In the back, look at all these modules and built up pieces, as you can see, nothing is flat anywhere. Everything is popping up or moving forward, it's insane. Now the engines themselves are recessed, which is nice, and even underneath is detailed, they did an amazing job. Looking at the rest, look at all this stuff. This is insane the amount of detail they put into here. It really is. We have another two engines right here. Looking good. Let me turn the ship this way. We have our other engines on the other side. Look at all that detailing again. Like the other side, they are recessed, detailing underneath and around. Even on the walls, there's some recessing. Fantastic stuff. And here we have some grates, it looks like. Just, oh, even the walls are done. Beautiful, simply beautiful. Even if you don't play the game of Armada, this is a conversation piece. It really is. Here we have our other engines, looking good. And look at all this leading to the main body of the ship. Fantastic stuff. There's our other stand port right there. Moving back. There's just, oh my god, the amount of details mind boggling here. Tons of detailing. Everything I've ever went over is in this model. And it's blown me away. Literally, I'm speechless half the time. I don't even know what to say. Here we have the aft aft engines all the way in the back they are also recessed as you can see and if you take a close look there is detailing in between the engines in the aft that is insane holy smokes now at the back of the ship after the aft engines we have tons more detailing a nice recessed spot here fantastic the amount of detail Holy moly. And then right up to the back lip here. With some beautiful detailing. Raised lines. 
little modules. Even the walls are detailed. Just a beautiful job. And here we have the side of the ship. And you can see just how crazy this is. Look at this. I love this section here because it's like a board cube almost. Very nice on the sides. I like the little slant here. That's pretty awesome. Got such a beautiful ship. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Look at that. Holy moly. Even back here, look at all that. The detailing underneath. That is sick. They didn't even need to do that, and they did. That's how hardcore this company is, man. I'll tell you what, they make some of the best ships I've ever seen in my life. Look at that. That is insane. Beautiful stuff. And here I have the entire aft section shot from a distance. And as you can see, not only is it detailed extremely well, but the paint, the black wash, really makes all these little fine details pop and adds a lot of depth to the model awesome stuff and that's everything for the mold hopefully i covered everything for you at home i think i talked a little too much but you know what for all of you watching maybe you're on the border about buying this so i'm trying to show you all those angles and show you exactly what you're trying to buy and i think this is beautiful and what makes it even better is the paint job so now let's take a look at that and now looking at that paint on the super star destroyer this baby features four different colors First up, we have light gray for the main color of the ship, which I think is a nice choice. It matches the other ships in the collection, so that's cool. This is followed by a darker gray, which we can see scattered throughout the dorsal and ventral sections of the ship. The paint seems very well done, and as of now, I only see one major blemish to report on. It's at the bottom of the ship seen here. Moving on, we have light blue for the engines, which is pretty good. It does match the other Imperial ships in the line. However, if you recall back to the Empire Strikes Back, the engine should be a red or red-orange mixture. For the price, I would expect it to be accurate to the film, but I guess it is what it is, right? If you're a customizer, though, this is a good project for you. Grab some paint and fix it up yourself. And finally, if you've been watching my channel, you probably know what I'm going to say. The last color is black wash. This stuff gets in all the nooks and crannies, showing off all those beautiful details and adds a layer of realism to the model that is breathtaking. And that does it for the mold and the paint. In short, I am in love with this ship. I think it is beautiful. The mold is excellent and the paint really brings this to life, especially that black wash. So now let's get this baby back on a stand and compare it to some other pieces. Now for a size comparison with the Star Wars Armada Super Star Destroyer, up first we have it next to all Imperial ships of the line, all Rebel ships of the line, and every Star Wars Armada ship released as of August 8th, 2019, and you can see how this ship just dwarfs everything that came before it. And now for some bonus size comparisons, here we have it next to the Marvel Legends 6 inch Captain America, the Eagle Maw Star Trek USS Vengeance, Star Wars Black Series 6-inch Sand Trooper with Dubak, Transformers Combiner Wars Devastator, the NECA Alien Resurrection Queen, a beautiful piece there. Next, we have the Hot Wheels Star Wars Star Destroyer, then some X-Wing ships. We have the Ghost, the ARC-170, and a Jedi Starfighter. And finally, just for laughs, here we have it next to my bootleg 6-inch Michael Jackson. <laughs> And that does it today for my review of the Star Wars Armada Super Star Destroyer Expansion Pack released in 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been reviewing ships now for over three years, and at the end of my reviews, I always try to summarize the major points of the video. And what, what do I say? You know, I, I'm beating a dead horse here. This ship is beautiful, hands down, probably the best ship in my entire collection, detail-wise and paint. The thin is immaculate. It's, I'm speechless. I really don't know what to say. You know, for the mold, it's A plus work. All the nooks and crannies, the paneling, the line work, it's all there. My favorite part has to be either the city section or the underneath with all the engines. It's breathtaking. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. For the paint, it's what we've seen with other Imperial ships, the two types of gray and the wash. 
I think it works very well for the model. However, I don't like the blue in the engines. I think it would have looked better with the orange or red orange, but that's just my opinion. Still pretty nice though. Expansion wise, if you're an Imperial player in the game of Armada, what are you waiting for? This is a massive expansion. It's a massive, beautiful ship, and I fully recommend it. If price is a concern, like it was for me, shop around. I've seen these as cheap as $140 something, all the way up to past $200. So you do have a little options here and there. I will say this though, it is an expensive ship, especially if you're on a budget. But my God, if you want one, if you love this ship, I recommend you go for it. And plus, it adds a lot of different mechanics to the game of Romada as well. So get it, go have fun with your friends, this thing is a beast. Now, ever since I was a kid and saw The Empire Strikes Back, I always wanted an SSD. And Fantasy Flight Games, you know, my hat's off to you. This is a beautiful piece. It looks like something you would see in a museum, and it makes it worth every penny. So that's everything I have to say about this magnificent ship today. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, hit that like button. And if you would like to see new reviews every Thursday, subscribe. Again, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it, and I hope to see you next time. Bye, everybody.